In this video, I'll demonstrate how to do German short rows. Uh, they are one of my favorite methods of short rows. They resolve really nicely and they are great for knitting in the round and you resolve them the same way in the round as you would um, knitting flat back and forth. So I've got this swatch here of 28 stitches and I've knit a few rows of garter and then a few rows of stockinette. And then I've knit 24 stitches, so four stitches before the end. And I'm going to do a short row here and do um, three sets of short rows and then resolve them all on the knit side and resolve them on the purl side. So when you uh, knit short rows with German short rows, when you stop to turn your work, you don't wrap or do anything, don't move the yarn, you just turn the work and you make sure that the yarn is in front. Uh, in this case, because I just worked a knit row, the yarn is already in front because um, it's now I'm on the purl side, so I don't need to move the yarn. And so I've turned my work, made sure the yarn's in front, and I'm going to slip a stitch to the right needle. Then I take this working yarn and I pull it over to the other side and create what looks like a double stitch. It's just the one stitch. So these were the four and then I turned, slipped one over and then I've pulled that yarn all the way to the back. Looks a little strange, but we'll, I'm gonna call that the double stitch, but it is only one stitch. And then I'm going to purl back. And of course I need to bring my yarn forward to just between the needles ready to purl and I'm going to pull that pretty snugly and then purl until four stitches before the end. So now I've purled until four stitches before the end. I'm going to turn my work. Don't do anything else. Now before I slip that stitch from the left needle to the right needle I need to make sure the yarn is in front and it's naturally not in front because I just worked a, a purl row so it's on this side and I'm on the knit side so the yarn's on the back so I need to bring it to the front. So that's the key thing to remember for German short rows before you slip that stitch you must make sure the yarn's in the front. So I'm going to slip that stitch and then I do the same thing as before. It looks a little different but I do do the same thing. I pull that working yarn over to the back and then here's my twin stitch or my double stitch here so there's the four that one that looks like two now but it is just one stitch and now I'm going to knit until eight stitches before the end so now I'm eight stitches before the end it might look like nine but it's actually only eight so that's one two three four this is the double stitch so that's five, six, seven, eight. So you just gotta remember that that one looks that with the two close together, that's actually the one stitch. And so I'll repeat that. So I wanna do another short row here. I just turn my work, make sure the yarn's in front, which it is. Slip a stitch to the right needle and pull that yarn to the back. Now I'm going to purl back so the yarn's in the wrong position for that. So I need to bring it forward between the needles, ready to purl. And now I'm going to purl until eight stitches from the end. So here I am eight stitches before the end. So that's two, four. That's the double stitch. So that's five, six, seven, eight. So I'm ready to do another short row. So I just turn my work. Make sure the yarn is in front. It isn't in front at the moment, so I need to bring it to the front. Slip the stitch and then pull it over to the other side. And, you know, give it a good tug and then start knitting until 12 stitches before the end, which won't be long because it's short rows. So that's two, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I've got four more to do. So I'll turn my work. Make sure the yarn's in front. Yes, it is. Slip the stitch, pull the yarn over and bring the yarn to the front of the work to purl. Now I'm going to purl until 12 stitches before, which is probably only a couple of stitches. So that's two, four, that's five, six, eight, that's nine, ten, 
11, 12. So one more. Turn my work. This is my last short row. Bring the yarn to the front. Slip a stitch and pull the yarn over. So now I've done three short rows on the knit side and three from the purl side. Now I'm going to start resolving them. These are very simple to resolve. I'll try to make it as clear as I can in the video. This is the double stitch here and I'm just going to knit it together as one stitch when I get to it. So I'll knit one, knit two, and then I insert the needle I'll make this as clear as I can under those two loops there so I'm just knitting it, it's actually sort of where you naturally feel like you want to go um, I think when you're doing your own swatch you'll feel it correctly wrap around pull through and take it off so you're knitting it as one stitch Let's, so I'll knit to the next one Two, one, two, three. Here's the next one. So you can see it here, it's a double stitch. If I sort of push it a little bit that way, you can see there's two loops there. If I pull it that way, it's less easy to, you've got two loops that way, but if I pull it that way, so they're sort of interlocked at the top, I just want to insert my needle under both of those, wrap around and pull through. And then knit three more, and then the last one. You can see I want to go under both of these legs of yarn. And then that's the German shirt rose resolved from the knit side. Now I'm going to resolve them from the pearl side. They actually look quite neat already. That's where they are. And they actually look quite neat even from the pearl side. It's that one there, because I know it's four, five. It's this one here. One, two, three, four. This one here. This one here. But they actually look quite neat even from the, the wrong side. And then I'll purl across to resolve the ones um, that were created uh, on the purl side. So just showing you that's where these ones were. One, two, three, four, five. That was the shore row there where I stopped. One, two, three, four just under here. Those ones have already been resolved because I did them on the knit side. And these ones I'll resolve. Okay, so that's the double stitch there. Pearl the one before it. And you can see that there's two strands here looped by, sort of interlocked with two strands on this side. So I just want to insert the needle under both of those strands. And purl them together and you can see that falls to the wrong side which is what you want purl three more insert the needle under both of those strands purl them together that bring comes to the wrong side one two three and there's another one there's the fourth one and now they are all resolved. That's these ones here on the wrong side and on the right side. It was here. One, two, three, four, five, that one there. One, two, three, four, that one there. You can sort of see that there's like a shadow, there's a, an extra stitch behind it or an extra wrap behind it, but it just closes the, the gap there. So I've just done a couple of extra rows on top of the short rows, and you can see uh, that there are more rows in the center than there are at the edges. 
and the short rows are just around here. It's where they sort of took place around here. They're, they're pretty well, I mean, I haven't blocked this swatch. I just finished knitting it. Um, so they're, they're pretty well hidden and they're also, you can see them on the wrong side, but they don't have quite as big a loops as you would normally get with the, um, certainly with a wrap and turn. And this is a block swatch here. So they're pretty well hidden in there. And certainly, you know, um, on a full garment, it's on the right side. You're not really gonna see them. You can see them slightly on the wrong side, just little spots here. But usually this would be on the inside of a jumper. So that's the German short rows. And they, um, you work them exactly the same in the round as you do flat, so they're a really good choice if you are knitting in the round.